so today the Vancouver Canucks salute the only team from this city ever to win the Stanley Cup, the 1915 Vancouver Millionaires. The Ottawa Senators lost that series, went on to win four Stanley Cups in the 1920s. Let's take a look at the numbers for our starting goaltenders presented by Honda. And for the Ottawa Senators, it's 32-year-old Chicago native Craig Anderson. His wife gave birth to their second son this week. He was not available for the game against Detroit on Thursday night. He led the NHL in goals against average and save percentage last season. And for the Vancouver Canucks, something of a surprise. It is Eddie Lack, the 26-year-old rookie who gets the start in place of Roberto Luongo. He shut up the St. Louis Blues in the first game after the Olympics. The first goalie to throw a shutout at the Blues this year. Allowed one goal and a shootout loss to the Minnesota Wild here across the street on Friday night. John Tortorella has coached to one of these games before with the New York Rangers in Philadelphia. And his team clinging to the final playoff spot in the Western Conference. Paul McLean was an assistant coach with the Detroit Red Wings when they played at Soldier Field in 2009. And so the Canucks in their maroon uniforms, the Ottawa Senators in, we'll call them cream and white, and the puck played down to the Ottawa zone as Eric Carlson goes back for it. Milan McCulloch waiting for it. Try to glove that puck ahead, and now Yannick Hansen fires it down low. Here's Higgins picking it up now for Vancouver. Chris Higgins, native of Smithtown, New York, plays it back, and that shot whistled wide of the goal by Yannick Hansen. Vancouver starting off in the offensive zone. The big question has been, can they score goals these last couple of games? And Hansen battling for it now in the corner. Lost the puck to Corey Conacher. And Carlson plays it across for Ottawa. Sends up to a horrible start this season. Four wins in their first 14 games. Now play to set right as Milan McCullough chips it ahead. Here's Jason Spezza in, shoots, and Lack knocks that to the corner. Gordon, for me down here watching these two teams with the throwback jerseys they both have on, it's really tough to distinguish quickly which team is which. So the players are really going to have to play a heads-up play. You already touched on uh, Eddie Lack being in goal. There's Roberto Luongo at the end of the bench. He was not very happy yesterday, Gord. You talked to him, but when we talked to John Tortorella this morning, he said, look, I've got 20-odd games here left. Eddie Lack, we knew, was going to play right after the Olympics, give Roberto a little bit of a rest. He said, Eddie Lack has played great. I basically have to play him right now. I know it's going to turn into a big thing, and Luongo isn't happy, but we'll just have to deal with that as we go along. But going back to the line, and Cody Cece, an Ottawa native drafted in the first round by the Senators, plays that down in the corner. And at the blue line, the Millionaires, or the Canucks, played ahead as Henrik Sedin chops it in. Back in the early days, they were named the Millionaires. Now they are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and Daniel Sedin throws that back in the corner, and CC picks it up. It, it's not a small thing here about here, here. trying to distinguish your own teammates quickly. As fast as this game is, it's difficult, and when you have to really distinguish those jerseys, players are going to have to concentrate here. Pretty good chance this will be the best ice any teams have played on in the stadium series, right? It looks fantastic here, here, right here. now. It's not cutting up easily, and it's smooth for sure. In comes Kyle Turris with the drop, and Patrick Rierkar throws it on goal, and he locked with a quick save on the rebound. Oh, there's a big chance lost there for Ottawa on the rush. They were able to get tremendous penetration. Weircock just never pulled the trigger. Now turned over by David Booth. And in the corner, Mike Hoffman, number 68, has it just up with Ottawa, was number two in the American Hockey League with 30 goals at the time of his call up to the NHL. And the Canucks bottle up for the moment. Now play up along the wall and chipped out by Kevin Bieksa back down to the Ottawa zone. And Eric Carlson's back already for the Senators. Two and a half gone in the opening period. Vancouver has won six straight against Ottawa and ten of the last eleven. Bobby Ryan with Mika Zibanejad, they got their wires crossed. And now back up the Canucks the other way as Zach Delphi's back in the Vancouver lineup. As the fourth line center and Tom Sestino comes barreling in. Now a long shot from the line. From Edwards turned away, another chance. And Anderson gets in the way of that drive from Vancouver's Raphael Diaz. Edler throws it through traffic and Anderson will glove back. 
Ottawa missing their first big chance of the game. Wendy's RoboCam will give you an idea of what happened coming out of the zone, but Weirkoch, the defenseman, will end up jumping up in the play. Look how deep they are. They're down to the hash marks, and then Weirkoch just doesn't pull the trigger, veers off to the side, doesn't get the shot away. Ryan Stanton, the defenseman in the middle of the ice for Vancouver at the last second, did a really good job of waving his stick and pushing Weirkoch off to the side, so he couldn't pull that trigger, so disaster narrowly averted early for Vancouver. And now Ryan Kessler steps in for the face-off for Vancouver, very much in the spotlight. The NHL trade deadline comes on Wednesday. There are reports circling around the lake that he has asked for a trade. He has a no-trade clause. He's denying it, but if he's on the market, Ryan, he will be a highly coveted player. One of the best two-way centers in the game, no doubt. What a buzz around here, of course. I don't think a lot of the fans here in Vancouver saw that coming. Did he ask for it or didn't he when he was at the uh, Sochi Olympics? He supposedly talked to somebody and said, well, I'd like to get out of Vancouver. We'll see where all that goes. Yeah, you got a penalty coming to Ottawa. It'll be a roughing call against the Senators as Colin Greening goes off and the Vancouver Canucks get the first power play of the game. And it was against Ryan Kessler who gets in on the forecheck as well as anybody. And Greening just gets the stick up and the arm up and catches the face of Ryan Kessler. So a power play that can be really dominant, but it's been quiet over the last several games, especially because both Hendrick and Daniel Sedin have completely dried up. And Burroughs has not scored a goal all season long. Incredible. Led them in goal scoring last year. Moves ahead by the Canucks as Raphael Diaz newly acquired, plays it back for Alex Hendler with a wrist shot and a leg in front. And it's moved ahead by Mark Mathot for Ottawa. Vancouver is three for its last 40 on the power play. The Canucks have dropped to 28 in the league. Sedin between them are goalless in their last 40 games and Daniel throws that on goal. It's gloved by Craig Anderson. Well, you're going to see Daniel especially, I think, keep the game really simple. He, nothing's gone in for him. It's incredible that he's gone 21 games without a goal. Daniel Sedin, one of the top goal scorers every year. You can rely on him to put the puck in the back of the net. He's just going to throw it there from everywhere. But when you're feeling it, you make much better plays than when you aren't. Looks like we had a false drop here and they blew the whistle. I think it's a clock issue. Of course, this is a temporary hockey facility, so the timing bench is perhaps unaccustomed to the folks who normally run it across the street. We are literally across the street from the Canucks home arena. That clock upstairs, that, that screen is nearly as big as the ice surface. I look up there, I can watch the game up there. Dan Hamuse being watched here by Jason Spetson in Ottawa, able to knock it out. Ottawa was number one in the league on the penalty kill last year. This year they've dropped to 20th. And as much as the Sens talk about not scoring goals, keeping the puck out of the net has been the big issue all season long. Long shot by Jason Garrison, save made by Anderson, and the puck loose at the side of the goal. As Chris Higgins was whacking at that. And now some pushing and shoving breaks out as Yannick Hansen is into it. With good, Ottawa captain Jason Spezza. Good timing pattern there by Higgins getting to the front of the net. Hit that shot from the point. He did get a piece of it. Kessler takes the zone, gets it back to the point, and this is a shooting defense, no doubt, for the Vancouver Canucks. You can see Higgins moving in, getting in good position, got a piece of that. Anderson does a real nice job. Jason Garrison's got a heck of a shot, a big bomb from the point when he wants to, lot, when he wants to let the slap shot go, but that was a timing wrister there. He got it through at the right time. Face off one by the Senators and fired down the ice by Chris Phillips. Phillips is another guy who's going to be an unrestricted free agent in his 16th year from Ottawa. He's being talked about as a potential trade target as well at the deadline. Always no stay-at-home defense, but we hear that every year, Gord, don't we? You want to see teams that think they have a shot, they want one more guy on defense to load up for the playoff run. And Hamuse, a gold medal winner for Canada, and Sochi brings it to the line and fires it around. 35 seconds to go in this Vancouver power, but Garrison steps up and bounces away from him. Now Garrison sends it back in front for Hansen. That pass bounced off his stick. Hansen to the line to hand you. Crossy goes to Garrison. Score! Jason Garrison with a bomb from the point. And it's 1 0 Vancouver.
There's that big slap shot by Jason Garrison, but it was deflected. I think it might have been Kyle Turris, number seven, who gets a piece of this one. Yeah, off the shaft of the sticks. It might have been touched by Kessler again in front. It was difficult for me to tell from here, but it deflected up most definitely off of Kyle Turris' stick. He was very close to Garrison. Watch Anderson go down, and as he goes down, the puck sails right by his right ear, right over his shoulder, and he knows it's in without even turning around. So a much needed power play goal for the Vancouver Canucks and they've got the early lead here in Ottawa. Now the exit trail back. It's ahead for Brad Richardson. So Garrison gets credit for the goal. That's his seventh of the year. Might be reviewed now. Ottawa comes right back in the shot by Corey Conacher. Steered away by Eddie Lack. It was that initial deflection off of Turris' stick that made the biggest difference though for it. it. It changed the trajectory up as Anderson was going down on his knees. Now back at the point, here's Bieksa with a play off the end boards. And of course the Canucks won't be used to the home boards in this rink. As Bobby Ryan brings it back the other way. Along with Hoffman who peels off on a chain. Garrison from Hanson and Hem used the scoring play. For the Vancouver Canucks on the power play, 4.54. Colin Greening looks down to Zach Smith. Smith spins and shoots, that's blocked. And now Smith gathers it back up. Chris Neal works his way in front, flips that wide of the goal. And back it comes to Mathot looking for Colin Greening. The exit to the point, but not out. Zach Smith with a long wrist shot that floats wide. Daniel Sedin trying to poke that ahead, finds Alex Burrows. That's knocked away from them. The fourth line for Ottawa has Vancouver's top line hemmed in here. Ottawa needs some sustained time inside the zone. You get down early in the game. You just want puck possession. Spend a little time after you've been scoring on 200 feet away. Helps turn the tide a little bit. One step at a time. Alex Burroughs had that knocked away. You mentioned no goals on the season for Burroughs. He led the Canucks. Goal scoring last year. It is astounding that that top line has struggled as mightily as they have offensively. Now Kessler back on it to the point. Alex Edward with a shot and Craig Anderson gloves that through the traffic. Connects with the early goal and the 1 0 lead. You're watching the 2014 Heritage Classic from Vancouver on NBCSN. That's a good positioning save there. He has to find the puck first, but you have to be set up right, too. That's a good save for him. Now need Anderson. Oh. It was so strong for them last year. Ottawa has dropped from second to 28 in goals against in the league this season. Eric Condra pokes that ahead and turns with a long shot. Hit the goal post. Kyle Turris rings it right off the pipe and behind Eddie Locke, who has a nervous look back, and now Kessler the other way for Vancouver. Knocked down by Clark MacArthur for Ottawa. And Rick Whitey goes to Eric Condra. Native of Trenton, Michigan fires it in. And Dan Ham used back to pick it up for Vancouver. Long lead pass for Higgins who banks that down to the Ottawa zone. And the Fox swings back to pick it up. You think Chicago and Pittsburgh are watching today a little envious of oh, this yeah. kind of ice? Yeah, no doubt. Now Zibanejad throws it across for Ottawa. Here's Bobby Ryan back in front. Bouncing puck almost tipped home by Rafael Diaz into his own net. And now Bobby Ryan back with it for Ottawa. To the point to Mathot for Eric Carlson with a shot that was blocked. And almost off of the races was Tom Sestito. No one in this game has played in an NHL stadium game, but Sestito played in three in the American League. Now Ryan lost the handle in Vancouver, able to move it out and race for the puck now. And busting in for the connect is Sestito, pumps that wide to the goal. As he was poked, checked by Anderson, that was Zach Dalby rather. And Eric Carlson picks it up for Ottawa. Great speed by Dalby going down the wing there. He got poke checked right at the last second. Now Edward almost lost the puck to Chris Neal. And Chris Tanner gets slammed into the corner board. From your perspective, where you are back there, it must be difficult to see the numbers score. These jerseys have a lot of different colors on them and texture. And now, in behind the play, we've got a high sticking penalty coming. And it's going against the Ottawa Senators. Chris Neal will go off, and Vancouver will get its second power play. Yeah, Ottawa's not happy. Chris Neal with his stick up a little bit. They're right there, it's that sort of a shovel technique there. Prior to that, the hit post by Kyle Turris. Watch him just snap this. 
and it comes out of a maze of a couple of legs and you could see the goaltender Eddie Lack just never picked it up right away, but those goal pills and posts were his friends there. Ottawa Bent was really upset that there wasn't a, a penalty on Ryan Kessler about a minute earlier than that on the hit on the end zone boards, and then they get one for Neal. Now back to the point, Alex Edler had that shot blocked by Eric Condra on the speech that almost broke in on the Vancouver goal as Rafael Diaz picked up from Montreal for Dale Weiss. Settles things down on the power play. Vancouver was looking for a right-hand shot as a play in the power play. Managed to get the Switzerland native from Montreal. And they've dressed seven defensemen the last couple of games. You've got Diaz who will take shifts up front on forward so that they can use him basically on the power. Center to the centers of the save made by Anderson in tight on Burroughs. But back comes out all the other way. Short hand of the pass too far for Colin Greening. Nine and a half down in the opening period. Vancouver leading on a power play goal. Back on the man advantage. Alex Burrow settles things down, drops it off for Ryan Kessler, who leads the Canucks with seven power play goals on the year. Scored shorthanded as well for the Canucks on Friday against Minnesota. Cam Hughes, out ahead for Kessler, it is Ryan Kessler with a shot, that goes off the glass and rolls about 70 feet over towards the stands. There's a look at Alex Burroughs who had a terrific scoring chance and look at Henrik Sedin between the feet right on the tape of Burroughs. Burroughs doesn't waste any time. He just can't find the back of the net. You can see him drop that knee down, try to get it elevated to the top of the net and a terrific save there for Burroughs. Burroughs zero goals on the season. Henrik Sedin none in 19. Daniel Sedin none in 21. Alex Burroughs with 73 shots on the year. He's missed significant time with two injuries, 12 with a broken foot, and then 20 with a broken jaw. Well, it's been terrible for him. He's just coming off a thumb injury, too, but getting that stuff off his face from the broken jaw, the way he has to play the game, John Cordarello talked about it, he'll get his game back here, soon. Now Hansen plays it back to the point for Garrison, and really rip it, we saw earlier. Now Hughes back to Garrison. Garrison plays it across, there's Hansen with a drive, it bounces down in front, Higgins trying to reach it. Now Ryan Kessler down low, Kalai time with Chris Phillips. And now Eric Condra diving, plays it up to center ice, and Garrison knocks it down. For a guy with a big shot, Ryan Garrison surprisingly uses a really long stick. Now Hanson fires, and Anderson knocks away, he's losing, but bouncing, and Craig Anderson almost lost that. Lively board that came off right back between his legs. Hanson's another shot, bounces down in front, tapped wide by Kessler. Back at the point is hand use. Final second of his power play. Banged around the glass by Condra. And Chris Neal moves it up to center ice. No! Racing back is Dan Hand use one of three BC natives with the Canucks. He's from Smithers, not far from here. Lots of ticket requests for the BC boys on both teams. Jason Spencer. Full check of the Vancouver line by David Hoof and Grant Richardson. As in the head is Zach Cassian. In comes Cassian now working on Eric Carlson. Nikolai Hart in the corner. Cassian still with it. Lost the puck now to Carlson. And the puck loose in front. Cassian a pitch shot. Score! Zach Cassian makes it 2 nothing Vancouver. Just terrific work along the boards by the Vancouver Canucks and Ottawa's really upset again because there wasn't a high sticking call against Corey Conacher who got a stick in the mouth. But watch them pull the puck off the wall and then Cassian who is big and strong controls the puck well on his backhand with the one hand. Look at him that fish that in between a couple of feet including Mark Mathots the, the defenseman of the Ottawa Senators. And Anderson couldn't close the five hole down, but really upset. Corey Conacher just came back to the bench here, right beside me, the Ottawa bench, and he is slamming the door. They wanted a high sticking call and a chance on the power play. Ottawa didn't get it, now they're down two set. Cassidy's 11th of the year is his first in the last 12 games. And the Canucks who scored just two goals in their first two games after the Olympics have two in the first period this afternoon. Battle along the wall for it now is a bandage ad reaching for it. Native of Sweden. Up ahead for Bobby Ryan. Ryan's first NHL goal was scored in London, England. In the NHL Premier Series. Playing for Anaheim against the Los Angeles Kings at 0-2 Arena in London. Diaz with now. 
Up the center ice. That's knocked down by Hoffman. Ottawa got drilled on home ice 5 1 by Detroit on Thursday. The Red Wings were playing their second game in as many nights. That chased Robin Leonard from the goal. Anderson was chased his last start for the Olympics against Boston. Now he's caught out of his goal, and the Canucks have the puck. Daniel Sedin back to Henrik from the line. Tanner with a shot that was blocked. And Edler throws it ahead to the Ottawa line. In comes Alex Burrows with now. Burrows wide in, shoots. Blocked by Patrick Weircock. Up the other side is Burrows. Anderson makes the save. And he'll hang on. 7-18 to go in the first period. Zach Cassian has stick the Canucks to a 2-0 lead. Time now for Edward Jones FaceTime. Here's Brian Engelbaum with Vancouver Canucks head coach John Tortorella. Coach, did you change your approach at all for this game here? You've been through this situation before with an outdoor game. Well, the thing we talked about is just trying to explore ourselves offensively, just play. And I think these type of conditions, it, it lends itself to maybe a little bit of pond hockey. And I say that very carefully. It's not about no defensive concept at all, but allow yourself to play and try to have some fun here. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Yannick Hansen plays it back to the point. That's knocked away. And a chance now for Ottawa with a call and greeting. Bobble the puck at the Vancouver line. And across the line now is greeting again. This time with Zach Smith. The greeting tries to drop it back. Chris Higgins broke it up. And plays it across ice. Fired in now by Yannick Hansen for Vancouver. George, the fact that Tortorella would even use the word pond hockey <laughs> and then clarified afterwards, he is trying to send a message to his team, to his team to loosen up a little offensively for sure. Chris Phillips with a long shot, knocked away by Lack, and now the rebound tap wide as well. Tortorella is desperately trying to pump up his team in terms of being confident. He says, don't get down on yourself. A recent poll in Vancouver says 80% of Canucks fans don't believe this team will make the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, he's changed the environment around here for sure. Concentrating on defense, he thought they really had to, but at the same time, he obviously didn't plan on losing so much of their offense. And some of that certainly, I think, is because the, the players are concentrating on defense. Some of it is just plain bad luck. Again, going back to the Sedins, who would have thought you got 20 games with no goals? The thought plays it back in deep. Here's Lack for it. Now Garrison up no. along the wall. Burrows chips it up. A chance for the Canucks. Yes. Henrik Sedin works his way in. Henrik slides it back in front of Bobby Ryan waiting for it for Ottawa. Banks it off the glass. And back down the ice as BX is back to pick it up. 5.45 to go in the opening yes. period. Vancouver with a 2 0 lead. An icing call against the Canucks. Let's go back to the goal situation for Vancouver. It was Zach Cassian who got a piece of Conacher with his stick. And it should have been a high sticking call right there. So Conacher's kind of out of the play. See how he backed off there? Then Cassian will end up coming off the wall there because Conacher is behind him. Nobody picks him up in time. And then Cassian has enough time and room to score the goal. Ottawa was not pleased after that one, as you can imagine. Cassian got a nine-game suspension to start the season for a high stick on Edmonton, Sam Gagne. He's got the Vancouver Canucks out by two. You're watching the 2014 Heritage Classic from Vancouver, B.C. Reveal a season like no other gives you unprecedented access to the NHL's top stars on and off the ice from the outdoor games through the Olympics. New episode tomorrow at 11 Eastern on NBCSN. So here we are at the stadium at BC Place, this retractable roof put in place after the Vancouver Olympics. And this was the scene yesterday. The teams practiced with the roof open yesterday, but when the rain came, it takes about 20 minutes for the roof to close. It's the largest cable-supported roof in the world. And the roof was shut overnight and now remains that way for today with snow this morning and now rain falling this afternoon. It's funny, when, it, when we came to the rink yesterday, it was so overcast, I thought the roof was on. It looked like a roof, because I'd never seen it closed before. You can definitely tell the difference today when you got here. It cost over $500 million to retrofit the roof and Ouch. this stadium. Home of the Canadian Football League's BC Lions. Jason Spencer lost the puck, and now Cassian has it back the other way for Vancouver. A scramble in front of the Canucks bench as Brad Richardson chips it in, and Anderson leaves the puck back for Eric Carlson. We haven't said that name very often. Carlson needs to have the puck a lot. He's one of the best offensive players in the game, and he just haven't touched the puck much. Now the bouncing puck goes over the glass. 
And out of play, this stadium opened in 1983. Pope John Paul was one of the first to appear here at the Stadium BC Place. Hosts the Grey Cup eight times, including the 2011 Grey Cup when the Pope BC Lions won it. Of course, the opening and closing ceremonies for the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. The Rolling Stones have played here. Sir Paul McCartney's played here. U2. And this winter, or this November rather, it will play host to its ninth Grey Cup game. It's a very calm environment, very interesting down here because obviously the fans are a lot farther away than they are in the NHL rink. But it's, it's fairly warm down here because of the roof being closed as well. Now we're going to watch it and fires it wide. Driver has played outdoors before in college. The driver was at BU. They played at Fenway Park. Here's Driver back with it. Shot, hit balls off a leg, back in front, fired, score! The point shot taken by Ottawa's Eric Condra appeared to be tipped in front by the Clark MacArthur, and the Senators are within line. It was definitely hit. I wondered if Kevin Bieksa hadn't gloved it. He was trying to clear it away. Let's keep an eye on number three for Vancouver as well, too. Here comes the shot. Bieksa was trying to clear it, but yeah, I guess MacArthur did get a stick on it. Gribus initial shot is blocked. There isn't much room in front. The quick shot away. There's the deflection. All I could see from down here is Bieksa's hand waving on it. I, I thought maybe it had touched his hand, but definitely looks like MacArthur must have got a piece of it with a stick. So MacArthur had to score in his last nine. Should get credit for that one. The video officials are going to be busy between periods. I'll look at the first that Cooper goal that they gave to Jason Garrison. And Clark MacArthur does get credit for it. It's his 19th of the year. And that's a big one for Ottawa to draw within one. Oh! At the Vancouver line, the puck knocked down by Savannah Jet. Played across by Hoffman. A wrist shot taken by Bobby Ryan. That goes off the glass. And the rolling puck again goes a long way. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center and get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC National games. Never be without hockey. Interesting line with Mike Hoffman up from the AHL, Mika Zabanajad and Bobby Ryan. Zabanajad does a right, really nice job keeping the puck in and look at the nice drop pass for Hoffman and over to Bobby Ryan. Good stuff there from Ottawa that's finally starting to get a little bit of sync to their offensive game. Spent too much time to get an icing call here. Too much time in their offensive zone and of course those couple of penalty killing situations that they had that gave ice time and puck possession to Vancouver. So Ottawa trying to get something going here. There is John Tortorella, his first year as the head coach of the Canucks, his 14th behind the National Hockey League bench. Recently served a six-game suspension for the incident across the street where he tried to get into the Calgary Flames locker room. Fifteen days, six games later. It's Canucks right now in the eighth spot in the Western Conference. Now a penalty coming, as it's touched by Bieksa. And the Ottawa Senators are going to go to the power play as Ryan Stanton goes off for the trip for Vancouver. Yeah, look, it was right off the faceoff, I believe. Stanton, on the left side of your screen, there it is. Stick just kind of tied up there. I think that was Chris Neal that he ended up pulling down. Good chance here for Ottawa to gain some more momentum, get themselves back into it, only down one. Stanton picked up on waivers by the Canucks from the Chicago Blackhawks right at the start of the season. So Ottawa now goes to work on the man advantage. Spencer picks it up off the draw, plays it back to Eric Carlson. Back to the shot taken by Spencer is blocked. Here's Turris it now, sends it back in front. Spencer feeds in front, that's knocked away by Hoffman. Chance now for the Canucks, shorthanded. Ryan Kessler in across the line. Tries to drop it back, the shot hammered wide by Higgins. And this is some pond hockey here in the opening period. Spezza dances through center ice, gains a line. Jason Spezza still with it. Spezza shoots at the goal post. Jason Spezza with a great dash, rings it right off the iron. Here's Eric Carlson back with it for Clark MacArthur. Now Turris down to Spezza, tries to feed it back. He put Hoffman fans on that. He had locked down and out. And Spezza chops it across the Turris. 
Spencer trying to wrap that around. Blocked by a sprawling Dan Hamuse. And a race for it now as Kessler kicks at him. And MacArthur keeps him alive for Ottawa. Eric Carlson walks in and fires, scores! Eric Carlson, power play goal! And the game is tied at two! Eric Carlson will stand inside the offensive blue line like few players. This looks like a rather harmless shot, but it's the screen in front and a precise shot from Carlson. He just risks it, walks along the blue line, but look at the traffic in front of the net. Eddie Lack just never picked it up. Look how late he is in reacting. Did that hit a foot in front of him? He's looking one way to his left, and the puck comes back to the right. Really nice shot by Carlson. That looked like it went in cleanly. Eddie Lack never saw it. Just barely inside the goal post. Great look there. So Eric Carlson has his 16th goal of the year. He now leads all NHL defensemen, one ahead of National Shea Weber. He's running away with the defense point lead, as you might expect. But a big goal for Ottawa. The time game at two of the first period. Brian, we met with these two coaches yesterday. They both said they can't score. Yeah, exactly. But Ottawa was definitely slower to get started here offensively. That, that, uh, that goal evens it out in a lot of ways. You can feel the offensive confidence changing here for Ottawa. So 2.35 to go in the opening period. Game tied at two is Eric Carlson, the native of Landsboro, Sweden, who was so good again for the Swedes yeah. at the Olympics. He was the best defenseman at Sochi in the tournament. Got a lot of points early on. Dominated that bigger ice surface, of course. Allowed him that much more time and room. And he's used to it, of course. He knew when to knife into the good scoring positions, and that's what it's all about over there on the big ice surface. That was a terrific goal he just scored a moment ago. Smart shot. The centering pass knocked away, and Tanev plays it back down behind the Ottawa goal. And Henrik Sedin on it for Vancouver. Uh, skipped by Carlson, and Eric Carlson gathers it back up. He's number three in the league, Brian, a nice time per game. He's played 500 more minutes than any other Ottawa center of this season. Wow. He, he moves so easily, Gordon. He, his skating stride is just so easy. He knows how to conserve his energy. He doesn't play in traffic a whole lot. That's not his game. He steals pucks. He'll fend off players defensively because that's certainly part of his job. But Carlson doesn't get into the physical game very much so he can last long. Now a long shot taken by Turris is blocked by Lack. And he'll hang on to that. Brian, a lot of talk about the Eddie Lack situation and, and getting the start in place of a little longer. Yeah, for sure. And, and these guys, a lot of talk of them too. And John Tortorella talked about them uh, before the game saying that we're trying to get them to play up higher in the offensive zone. They're so used to cycling down below in the hash marks. Teams have seen it for so long, they're starting to just play them better. They let them do that. They'll let them cycle around down low in the corner. Said we have to get them up by the top of the circle, higher in the zone, give them more and better looks at the net. And he said it's been a hard sell. They're so used to doing what they do. In comes David Hook, drops it off, another shot by Cassian. That deflected off the shoulder of Craig Anderson, remains in play, but he's going in mesh at either end of the ring, so the puck will go up and go a long way. Now turns in, shoots, Black swats the rebound away. Now Booth knocks it out for Vancouver. Any luck? Any luck? Rather, was a hard luck goaltender before the Olympics. He lost five consecutive games in those five losses. The Canucks were shut out three times and held a one goal in another. Well, there, there's a lot of talk here for sure about him playing in this game right now, plain and simple. Roberto Luongo, I'm sure, was stunned that he didn't get the start. We mentioned before that everybody knew and Luongo knew that he wasn't going to play coming back from Sochi. And Lack just played so well that John Tortorella basically is riding the, the hot horse right now. And he thinks he's played well enough in, in the game that they won against St. Louis, which was his third career shutout, which is the most by any rookie goaltender in Vancouver history. Now Spencer played back to the side for us. McCullough throws it down to Spencer. Looking back in front for Corey Conacher. That pass misfired. And back up the Canucks in the way. Yannick Hansen fires it down. Love by Anderson. He's in there for Chris Phillips. He got tied up. Anderson tried to throw it back in front. The puck still was in the side of the goal. And Cody Ceci has it ahead to Corey Conacher. 
Cody Ceci has three goals this year, Brian. They're all overtime winners. One of the NHL against St. Louis, and two of the American League. Blair from the dramatic. He's he's a good, solid player. He's worked his way in. He didn't start the season with the team and shown that he can play in his own end, which, of course, you have to prove to your coaching staff if you're going to get any chance in any offense. Now Carlson winds his way into the dying second of the period. Zibanejad is in, but the play is offside at the Vancouver line. Well, stay tuned for the Lexus Intermission Report with Catherine Tapp and Keith Jones and Anson Carter. We'll talk about the trade value of Ryan Kessler and of a live performance with Tegan and Sarah from the stadium at BC Place. Vancouver stood up with their blue line on that last Ottawa rush. That's something they have to do better in the second and third period. They allowed way too much penetration on the rush by Ottawa on several occasions. So a wide open opening period comes to a conclusion. Vancouver takes the lead with a couple of quick goals. And Ottawa answers back with two of its own. And two teams that have struggled to score goals this year combined for four in the opening 20 minutes in a spectacular setting under the roof at the stadium at BC Place. It's the 2014 NHL Heritage Classic between the Vancouver Canucks and the Ottawa Senators. And our first intermission is coming up. Well, did you those two brothers are like glued together. When Daniel's not scoring, then obviously Henrik is not getting any points because that's where most of the numbers come from. And now Yannick Hansen with a quick shot, and Craig Anderson makes the stop on Hansen, who scored the only goal in Vancouver's 1-0 win over the St. Louis Blues in their first game after the Olympics. Yeah, Craig Anderson let in a couple in that first period, and maybe one of them was tough to see. He did make some good saves, no doubt, but the five-hole goal probably should have been stopped. He's had a lot going on in his life. He was in Florida from Tuesday till Thursday night, the birth of his second child. So readapting and coming here, and now an outdoor game. I think it's tougher. These games are tougher on the goalies than anybody else. Tougher to see the, the puck. The environment is just so different out there. You have to have more concentration. What's the light like down there, Brian? It's, it's actually not bad. It's not incredibly brilliant light, but it certainly doesn't cause a problem for the goaltenders. I don't see any dark spots, and the ice actually is holding up very good. It does slow down in the last four or five minutes, I, I noticed, but it does in every NHL city as well. Just after 2 o'clock local time, but this is a night game. With the roof closed, and the rain continuing to fall outside. Yannick Hansen in the cross the line for Vancouver, spins and shoots. Anderson gloves it down, leaves it there for Mark Mathot. Now CC for Ottawa. Pitches away ahead. Fires it off the end boards. Very lively board into this setup. Henry Kadeen swung back and tangled up with any lack. Lack stick actually got it in his sweater. Now it's bumped down in the Vancouver zone. The Thot trying to knock it out. And away comes Eric Carlson to lead the rush for Ottawa. Shoots! And that ran off the stick of Jason Garrison. And actually reached the stands. Pretty good shot. That puck had to go about 100 feet to reach the seats. Well, coming up next on Hockey in America, the Rangers host the Bruins tomorrow on NBCSN. The Stars battle the Sabres on Wednesday night rivalry. The Caps face off with the Flyers. Download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash live extra. Happy birthday to Henrik Lundqvist. We'll celebrate tonight by taking on the Boston Bruins. That was a good rush by Eric Carlson on that last shift, too. And you're right, Gord. That puck had to sail a long ways to get into the crowd. They were just appreciative. I'm thinking those people in the first row, they're thinking, there's not a chance we're getting the puck today. Now Carlson with a shot. That goes off a leg and wide. Kyle Turris feeds it back. And Eric Dryba leans into that shot right off the bench. And that's glove by Eddie Lack. Yeah, that was a line change there. And in the second period, of course, those defensemen can come out and get right into the scoring zone very quickly. Eric Greiba is going to come off the bench the left side of your screen and then look at the time and room that he has. Vancouver hadn't allowed for that line change yet. Kyle Turris had. Got it right on the tape of Greiba. Greiba moved in nicely. Got a good scoring chance away. Now off the draw. Another chance. And that quick shot taken by Chris Neal was blocked. Patrick Rearcock fires. That deflects wide. And Colin Greening's on it for Ottawa. Neal should not get a chance like that right off the face off. That's poor coverage by Vancouver. Now back at the point is Weirkosh. He and Kyle Turris of the Ottawa Senators, childhood friends here in suburban Vancouver, have known each other since the age of eight and played together for the first time at the age of 12. 
Now teammates in the NHL in their hometown as visiting players. And both of them have lots of friends and family here this afternoon. Well, there's lots more seats to choose from, yes. too. Nice change. Huh? Instead of 18 or 20,000, you get 50,000 50, plus. Yeah, a little more expensive for this game than they are across the street, however. And now Jason Spencer pokes that back to the line to Carlson, who's out there every other shift now for Ottawa. And Brad Richardson took a whack from Spezza. The pass knocked down by McCollum. Carlson feeds across to Spezza. Spezza tees it up and that rattles off the end boards. Eddie Lack was knocked off stride as McCollum was in the crease. And now Corey Conacher sends that to the goal, but it's tapped right back out by the Canucks. You know, Gordon Richardson just turned that puck over a, a mo few moments ago out of his own corner. I don't think he saw the right jerseys. He just gave it right to McCulloch, and ever since then, Ottawa's had the puck inside the zone. It was an easy clear by Richardson. He seemed startled that he didn't get the puck out of the zone, and he turned it over. Edler fires it down to the Ottawa zone, and Mark Mathot has it now. And Mathot lifts that down the Vancouver line, but the play's offside as Jason Spezza knocked it down. And fans enjoying themselves here at the stadium at BC Place. Jason Spezza having a solid year. Feeling a little bit more pressure, I think, for the Ottawa Senators this year, being captain after so many years of Daniel Alferson running the show. You get a look at the, the fans doing the wave here. The, the volume of the fans really carries in this building too, Gord, doesn't it, with that roof close? that Major League Baseball played in the stadium as well years ago. Exhibition game involving the Toronto Blue Jays. And now Hoffman brings it in for Ottawa. His centering pass went off the state. And Higgins has it down for Vancouver along with Hanson. Look it up to center ice. Hanson leaves it there for Garrison. He comes in and fires. He ripped that wide. Jason Garrison jumping into the rush for Vancouver. But Zibanejad has it the other way for Ottawa. Mika Zibanejad. Drops it off for Hoffman. Back to Zibanejad. Yeah, the pass is out of his reach. And back comes Vancouver with numbers. Cast it in across the line. Drops it off to Higgins. Higgins centering pass. Bounces down in front. And now Higgins from a sharp angle trying to bank it in. Good back check by Zibanejad. Hit the shaft of the stick. Otherwise, that's dangerous. Higgins back for Kessler. And his pass went off the skate. Garrison wanted to go to the bench, but the puck was right behind him. Now he'll fire it right back in. In behind the play, a delayed offside call, and a stoppage with 4.22 gone in the second period. Miga Zibanejad can play center and he can play wing. His, like, his coach likes him playing in the middle. Watch him come through right here, number 63, and he gets the stick, the shaft of the stick out there. That was Higgins making the pass across there. Excuse me, number 93 is Zibanejad. He has the shaft of a stick there. That was just good hustle there and reading the play and preventing that pass going across. Otherwise, it's a good one-timer chance. He was drafted sixth overall by Ottawa in the 2011 NHL draft. Had trouble establishing himself as a regular in the lineup as that backhand shot from Daniel Sedin goes wide. That Daniel Sedin was hammered down by Mark Mathot and Sedin has not gotten up. Daniel Sedin in behind the net as the play goes back the other way. And Lack makes the save. MacArthur with a shot. But 200 feet away, Daniel Sedin is still down. And finally now, play is called as the Canucks gain possession. But Daniel Sedin was crushed by Mark Mathot in behind the Ottawa goal. And Sedin is laboring to make his way to the Vancouver bench. Vancouver had the puck and they were up the ice on a scoring chance. Steve Kozari, the, the referee number 40, is the one right there. Oh yeah, yeah, that right leg is the one that was bothering him seen when he got back up as he was taken into the end wall trying to defend himself and put the brakes on at the same time. Pushed in there by Mathot and he laid down there for a very long time. Steve Kozari, the referee, watched him all the way all the way back as well and he realized that Vancouver had the puck and did not blow the whistle allowed Vancouver until he could see the uh, Sedin was really in difficulty getting off. Now the difficulty here is right at the dressing room is a long way from the bench. Not like a national hockey ring. It's a good 60 yards from where Sedin is. The dressing room now is black. He's that in behind the goal and Chris Tanev leaves that high in the air. And they're, they're talking to Sadine right now. Do you really need to go in the line? Because yeah, it's going to be very kind of him to do 
need that gun to get the If he does need assistance, they might have to get a cut for it. But that's the last thing the Vancouver Canucks need to see. As we've got a penalty coming down. Yeah, it's going to be a hooking call against Ottawa. Looks like Griba is going to go. Here's the penalty again. A good look. Hansen goes in along the wall. Good move there. He put a surprise move on Griba. And we have two penalties. We have a Vancouver Canuck in there too. I didn't see the second penalty. I saw the first, first hooking penalty. Henrik Sedin came right off the bench and started arguing about, you know, why are we getting a penalty here? He's arguing with Steve Kozari, the referee. There's Daniel Sedin. Apparently he is headed back to the locker rooms and you get an idea just of how far a distance he has to cover in order to do that. So offsetting minor penalties to be four on four now with 14 and a half to go in the second period of a 2-2 game but of greater importance Daniel Sedin one of this franchise's all-time leading goal scorers he's making his way to the locker and Hanson called for embellishment and not a top of the call here in Vancouver with three times the normal size crowd in attendance Cody Ceci jumps up for Ottawa plays that in behind the Vancouver goal it bounced away from Zach Smith. Greening stepped into Burroughs. And Zach Smith gathers that up, spins away from Burroughs. Smith goes back with it to the corner, goes back to Chris Phillips, has time. Walks back in front, Phillips drops it off for Cece. Rick Whitey goes for Smith, fires it back in front, tip wide by Greening. And Colin Greening back on it. Go, 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 come on, Corey come on. Grab, plays it back for Smith, Ottawa changing as Chris Phillips winds his way in. Boy, Vancouver really allowing Ottawa to possess the puck. They're not very aggressive on the puck carry. So then a jet drops it back, and the shot by Bobby Ryan was partially blocked, and Ryan hammered down Alex Burrow. That hurt Burrows, too. He comes back wincing on that left shoulder, and he didn't expect Bobby Ryan to drop the shoulder into him. Garrison drops that back, and the exit plays it ahead for Vancouver. Now Ottawa brings it back the other way. Eric Carlson for Zibanejad. Back to Carlson with a rolling puck. Eric Carlson feeds it back in front. Zibanejad shoots. It was blocked. He sends it back in front. Lack is down. Carlson winds and fires. And Lack gets a piece of that. This four on four is just made for Eric Carlson. Loves that extra room. In comes Cassian. Back from Vancouver. Shoots. And Anderson makes the stop with Brad Richardson digging for the rebound. 2-2 two, two the score. But... The concern for the Vancouver Canucks is number 22 as Daniel Sedin has left the game for the Canucks. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com. Get a look at the distance from the Stands to the boards here. That is not snow on the ground here at BC Place. That's cotton. Lots and lots of rolls of cotton. It makes you wonder how much it can absorb it. You open the roof and let it rain a little bit. I don't think we want to find out. No, you it's don't. It could be a softer landing if you follow the roof. Clark MacArthur winds his way in for Ottawa. Poke check there by Chris Cannon. Cannon, one of 19 college players on the two rosters from 19 different schools. A long shot stopped by Anderson now. Edler with a drive that's blocked. And away comes Ottawa. Eric Carlson ahead to Kyle Terrace. Terrace in across the Vancouver line. Throws it down. And Lack makes the stop on that. Let's go inside the glass. Presented by Capital One. Here is Brian Engblom. One of the guys you have to watch in a game like this, uh, watching the Ottawa Senators, Eric Carlson, uh, one of the top scoring defensemen in the National Hockey League. He came off the Sochi Olympics as the best defenseman in the tournament. And Carlson has had a terrific game as the game has gone on. It was a little bit slow early on, but you've really noticed at the end of the first period and as the second period has gone on as well too, Carlson's had the puck a lot more. He's made some good plays, of course. He's got that one of the two goals for Ottawa as well. Corey Conacher loose behind the Vancouver goal, lost the puck. Conacher was traded last year at the deadline by the Lightning to Ottawa in exchange for Ben Bishop. And what looked like an acquisition by Tampa to get a backup goaltender. Well, guess what? Ben Bishop is now the number one man in Tampa and playing very well. 
And that long shot gloved by Craig Anderson off the stick of Dan Hamuse. Dan Hamuse, who's owner of a gold medal as well. This uh, Vancouver defense, boy, they shoot a lot of pucks. They don't mess around. They get it back to the point. They throw it to the front of the net. They've had some good deflections in this game, some good screens, and they need more of that. As early on in the game, they had the puck most of the time, but Ottawa has certainly turned it around and has showed that. They've recovered that two-goal deficit they were under and still have that 2-2 hockey game. The ice is holding up pretty well down here. It's actually very warm down here. Warmer, I think, than uh, most of, of the uh, arenas around the NHL. So, Brian, this is your second stadium game of the year. The first one was in Los Angeles. The second one's here with the roof closed. Yes, sir. Yep, that uh, stuff in Chicago, which was great to watch from a distance from my couch, from my uh, uh, hotel room, was great. I was nice and warm. I think the warm one scored. That's a veteran move right there. Trying. Now whistled wide by Rafael Diaz, stepping up as the Ottawa's had the edge of the play here so far in the second period. Zach Delphi picks it up, plays it back to the point. The shot fired right on. As BX got that drive away, and Anderson turns it away. Zach Smith now breaks ahead with Colin Greeny. And Greeny deals back in the corner, trying to find a trailer. Chris Neal, Greeny back down to Neal. Chris Neal spins and shoots. Lack makes the stop. The rebound bounced in front. And Mark McBot plays it back in. Of course, the Vancouver line now juggled with Daniel Sedin out. There's Eric Carlson with a long shot with the flex off his stick. Up and on a play with 10.56 to go in the second period. Tom Cicita, we mentioned, played in a couple of outdoor games in the American Hockey League. Eric Carlson making his presence felt in this game. It's, it's so interesting to watch the guy play and skate. He sees the ice so well, maneuvers, knows exactly when to jump up on the play. He'll lead the rush on several occasions. And he seems to get back in his own end in time as well. Now Edler plays it high off the glass. Back out to Carlson. Alex Edler, another guy being talked about as a potential trade possibility for the Vancouver Canucks. Minus 23 on the year. That's 12 worse, Brian, than any other Vancouver player. That's not like Edler. He's usually a pretty good two-way player. Again, part of the woes in Vancouver Canucks. This year offensively, that's a good defensive play there. That was Edler jumping up in neutral zone. And the Canucks bring it right back in, but the shot is stopped by Craig Anderson. The Adler's got 15 points, got five goals and 10 assists. Usually they count on him for somewhere around eight or 10 goals a year and, and pushing 40 points. So that 15 points is really shy of uh, you know his, his average or where he should be headed to. But that minus 23, that's the one that really jumps out. Now, plus and minus are something that I take with a grain of salt a lot of the time. But when it's that out of whack compared to everybody else in the team, it has to get your attention. And some of that, I'm sure, is the reason why his name is being floated around with Kessler and some others here in Vancouver about trades. They've had this core together in Vancouver for a long time. Eight of them have been together for at least six years. Of course, they went to the Stanley Cup final in 2011, lost in Game 7 of the Boston Bruins. The Canucks have won one playoff game since. And John Tortorella, who doesn't mince any words and never does, said, you know, we, we have to have a different look at the way we play this game and make some adjustments to our game, and they're, they're still in that very painful process. Richardson fires that wide, back comes Ottawa the other way, spends it for McCulloch, Smith scores! Vaughn McCulloch fires it by Lack, and Ottawa has a 3-2 lead. I believe that's actually Cody Ceci, Cece uh, jumping up on the play. You're right, it is. My yeah, apologies, it is Cody Ceci. Yeah, it's hard to tell from there. These numbers on these jerseys are difficult to see. On the left side of your screen, Cece jumping up on the play. Vancouver doesn't allow for him. Pretty much a five-man attack here. Spezza dishing the puck off on the right wing. And then there's Cece jumping up on the play. Right-hand shot, so his stick is hard to get to. As Hamuse turns around and tries to make the poke check, Cece does a nice job of protecting the puck, gets an angle on it, gets it away quickly, and Ottawa now has the lead. That's his second National Hockey League goal. His first was scored 26 games ago in overtime against the St. Louis Blues. He's early. <laughs> So with nine and a half to go, Ottawa is taking its first lead of the game. Three goals on 20 shots, and another one rang right off the pipe. That one from Eric Condra. Terrific play out of the corner. And Ottawa has 
taken the initiative here in the second period so far. And has scored three unanswered. To take a 3-2 lead as Kevin BX has it down for Vancouver. Good killer instinct too after that goal. That was Kyle Turris who's had a strong game here for Ottawa. Got that puck out of the corner to Condra and ripped it right off the post. And MacArthur pitches that out for Weirkoch. Looking through the middle, knocked down by Henrik Sedin. So now Cassian is out there along with Henrik Sedin and David Booth. There have been a lot of passes in this game coming out of the zones for both teams when players are under pressure. Making passes I don't think they would make if they were able to distinguish the difference in the colors of the jerseys more quickly. I think it's really confusing out there which guys are which. Did you hear that just now, Brian? That's a We Want Lou chant going around the stadium. <laughs> they weren't very happy when they saw uh, Eddie Lack starting in goal, were they? When they put the starting goaltenders on the scoreboard here, the fans were looing or booing, depending on your point of view, as that shot deflects off the stick and out of play. Cody Cece, the 20-year-old from Ottawa, has the Senators ahead, 3-2 in the second. Now for Edward Jones FaceTime, here's Brian Engblom with Ottawa Senators head coach Paul McLean. Coach, your team got off to a bit of a sluggish start. You were down a couple of goals. Now you've taken the lead. What was your message? What do you think you've done better to turn it around? Well, we just tried to keep the game simpler and then tr try to play the game simpler, not complicate it too, too much. And I think we're just working a little bit harder at it. I think the first goal we got back, it gave us a lot of confidence and energy. Is there anything specific you're looking for from here on in? We just want to keep it up. And uh, when the ice starts to get bad like this, let's not make it pretty. Let's just keep it simple and uh, keep going after the goalie. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. First game of an all-Canadian road trip for the Ottawa Senators in the Edmonton, Calgary, and Winnipeg after this. Now Hoffman swings that big line for Mark Mathot with a drive. That tick wide in front. As Bobby Ryan appeared to get a stick on that. Now back at the point. Down over the front stick and back up to center right. Mark Mathot was invited to Team Canada's summer orientation help, help. camp as an Olympic prospect. As Hoffman comes in and fires. Ripped that high and wide. Mark Mathot's a good stay-at-home defense, but he's a good matchup for Carlson, too. Allows Carlson to roll on the ice and do what he does best. Because Mathot's really good at reading plays and covering up messes that might be created. Burroughs throws that ahead. And Henrik Sedin chips that in. Now you got Henrik Sedin with Ryan Kessler and Alex Burroughs, the forward line for Vancouver. And the Canucks will start a game. Corey Condor, the bouncing puck, can't clear it out. Chris Higgins, banned on the shot. The puck loose at the line, knocked ahead. The play's offside at the Ottawa line. And on a special day in Vancouver, the Canucks made a special announcement moments ago that Pat Quinn will go into their Team Hall of Fame. Acknowledged by the crowd here, an enormously popular member of this organization for a long time, of course. Led the Canucks to the 1994 Stanley Cup Final, which they lost in seven games to the New York Rangers. Terrific career by Pat Quinn, no doubt about that. Played for him for a short time. Interesting demeanor, big man, very gruff man. Spoke softly most of the time, but when he raised his voice or kicked over a trash can, he'd get your attention. <laughs> Got Bobby Orr's attention one night at Maple Leaf Garden. Oh, yeah, as a player. Yeah. Yeah. KO'd Bobby Orr with a big hit. That almost caused a riot. Yes. And Hansen feeds that back to the point and draws Tanev out. And Tanev fires it back in. It's in 19 schools represented here. Rochester Institute of Technology for Chris Tanev. Now Condra fires that down to the Vancouver zone and Tanev has it back for Vancouver. Vancouver doing a better job on Ottawa Bluff of jamming up no, the neutral no. zone. Edler in particular, his last couple of shifts, done a real nice job of turning pucks over against Ottawa before Ottawa can even get to the Vancouver line. Here is Bieksa floating that down on goal, and Craig Anderson able to hang on to that. Well, Saturday night, March 15th, the Formula One season returns at NBC Sports as four-time world champion. Sebastian Vettel defends his title down under the Rolex Australian Grand Prix. Coverage begins Saturday night, March 15th at 1.30 a.m. Eastern, 10.30 Pacific on NBCSN. Vancouver just gets the puck from the point to the net as usual. Look at Cody Ceci in front of the net against Richardson. Nice job there. 
CC was coming from the corner, had to get back to the front of the net quickly and make sure he tied up the stick of Richardson. He thought there might be a loose puck. Boxing out very well there. Six to go in the second period. Still the jump. On NBC today, Boston the Ranger tonight. It goes up hockey day across America. The most Canadian flavor this afternoon is Ottawa and Vancouver wake up the echoes of the 1915 Stanley Cup Series. Won by the Vancouver Millionaires. And there's the Vancouver uniforms. Fred Cyclone Taylor was one of their great stars. He actually used to play for Ottawa, but was lured as a free agent back in those days by Frank Patrick of the legendary Patrick family. Yeah, the, you had the Pacific Hockey Association back then, then the National Hockey Association, and then those two teams, Ottawa and Vancouver, in fact, back in 1915, together for a Stanley Cup. First time the two leagues agreed to play off for the Stanley Cup, and three years later, the National Hockey League was born. And the NHL seized control of the Stanley Cup in 1927 exclusively. And the first winner on NHL control, the Ottawa Senators. Not these ones. This franchise and the expansion group that came in in 1992. And Hammond is back with it. Vancouver hasn't won a Stanley Cup since. The extra up for Kessler. In comes Kessler, drops it off for Sestino. Back hands it in front, just missed the stick of Cassian. And Zach Smith back with it for Ottawa. Across to Colin Green. You heard Paul McLean say, don't be cute when the ice gets bad. In comes Ottawa, a long shot, stopped by Lack as Eric Condor got another chance away. And the save is made by Eddie Lack. The 2014 Heritage Classic returns to Vancouver on NBCSN after this. Cassian to be a rough customer to play against. He's sitting in the wrong box right now. Two minutes for roughing was what happened afterwards. Colin Greening was in there, number 14. Cassian just gets the hands up in the faces of a couple of players, and uh, it was enough to get the referee's attention. So John Tortorella is having tough, tough time seeing as well. He's got the glasses on. We've had some uh, close calls here. As far as goal posts go, too, Kyle Torres just ripped that one. And then you had Jason Spencer come in and hit one off the outside of the post as well. And it continued on. Cody Cece ended up scoring, coming up on the rush and putting it off the outside of the post for a goal. And now Ottawa on the power play, one for one. Eric Carlson back to Spencer. It was Carlson. Got it for the first power play goal. Now ripped wide by Clark McCarthy. And Hoffman. Just up to the American League getting time on the top power play unit for the Senators. A big time scorer for Binghamton in the AHL. And now fired down, this, down the ice by Vancouver. I really like the way Kyle Turris has distributed the puck for Ottawa. He's done a nice job, whether it's on the power play or five on five, out of the corner, putting it right on the tape for quick one timers for his wingers. Handler gets to it and slams it back down for Vancouver. Under four to go in the second period. Saw Chicago win at home last night at Soldier Field, but home ice wins have been hard to come by in these stadium series games. Up, 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 Jonathan Taves, what a game that was. That was Winnipeg weather, he was used to it. Burrows drops, Garrison in shorthand and Richardson rather, and it dribbles down. The Craig Anderson hangs on to that, Brad Richardson. There's a couple of shorthanded goals this year for Vancouver with a chance there. Vancouver on the rush, getting some penetration and getting some chances on the rush. That's really been shut off for them as this game has gone on. Vancouver has taken over, excuse me, Ottawa has taken over in small stages. You can see the ice is a little bit rough there. Richardson didn't handle that one very well. As he picked his head up to try to take the shot, he realized the puck had rolled off his stick. And now off the faceoff, Henrik Sedin fires that wide. By the way, word for the Canucks, Daniel Sedin will not return tonight. When he went into that end wall, boy, his legs really split apart there for it. That was painful to watch. Now Tanev battling for it with Ryan. McCollum steps into it. And away comes Hansen shorthanded. Yannick Hansen works his way in, steps around CeCe, throws it back in front of the pass, just missed Henrik Sedin. And Zibanejad, the other way for Bobby Ryan. Ten seconds to go in this power play, Zibanejad digging for it. Tanev takes that away, puts it in front, Hansen chips it ahead, and Hendrick Sedin will take the final second of this 
Henley off the clock, chips it down to the Ottawa zone, and Cassian is out. 2.45 to go in the second period. Ottawa with three straight goals for a 3-2 lead. Colin Greeny drops. In comes Chris Neely, fires it wide. And the puck bounces off the glass. Up and out of play. Nice play there coming out of their zone by Weirkoch. Made the long distance pass from deep in his own zone up to the far blue line. Caught Vancouver a little bit. Vancouver thought they killed off that penalty and maybe led up a little bit through the neutral zone. And because of that, there was some room. There's Weirkoch. There's a nice pass. And you watch Vancouver scramble a little bit here. Neal comes in late. Really good, well-timed drop pass there. Chris Neal got a good scoring chance out of that. First time at the NHL level that any of these players have played in a stadium. A few have played in the American League, one in college. But at the top level, this is the first for all of them. Yannick Weber of the Vancouver Canucks played in the Heritage Classic in Calgary a couple of years ago, but he's not dressed for the game this afternoon. And Colin Greening lost the puck to Zach Jalfi, took it a shot away. And Greening gets it back and finds Zach Smith. Now Neal rolls that down to the Vancouver zone and Ryan Stanton back to pick it up. Neal takes him in hard. Tom Sestino collides with Neal. And Vieksa has the puck for Vancouver. Boy, Stanton's head really snapped back when Neal hit him into that end wall. Now CC goes back, icing wave down, but Sestino hammered him. And CC didn't like that hit. As Hanley's backhands it out oh, for Vancouver. Oh. And Chris Phillips brings it right back in. Hendrick Sedin throws that back to the Ottawa line. Cody Cece trying to find Eric Condra. And here's Dan Hamuse rings it around the boards. Ten averaging for it. And Higgins trying to poke that ahead. And they bang along the wall for it. Just a minute to go in the second period. Ten it. For Higgins can't clear it out. Now Cece with a drive. Score! No, he did not post post it out. And a lead pass just missed Cassian. Cody Ceci came that close to his second goal of the game. It was post and post and out. He just had to control the puck coming off the wall. Got a really good hard low shot. It went off of somebody's foot in front. Good control there. If we can see a change, there's the change of direction. Oh. How about that for a double poster? You had a lot better look at that than I did, Gord. Eddie Lack comes across. Here's where he thinks it's going to go. Look at his body language. He can't believe it changed direction that quickly. It comes right. That was like a pool shot. Post, post, and right back through the legs to be covered up. Shots are 22-20 overall for Ottawa. And Spezza steps into the face on against Henrik Sedin. As this game has gone on, now the ice is getting progressively worse. And the shot taken by Spezza was blocked by Higgins. And Chris Higgins tries to poke it ahead. Vancouver can change now after the icing. And Sedin's on the ice. Throws it ahead for Yannick Hansen. That was knocked away from him as Mathot has it. 40 seconds to go in the period. Here comes Eric Carlson. Up ahead for Spezza. That pass was knocked down by Edler, sends it ahead for Hansen. In comes Yannick Hansen, shoots, and that ramps off the stick of Mathot. And goes up and out of play, and Alex Burrows and Corey Conninger collide after the whistle. Really good heads up, up play by Edler, turning that play over. Carlson's up on the play for Ottawa, and then later on, there was a long pass from Edler up to the forwards there, to Higgins, I believe, and then they got the puck into the middle of the ice. Burrows, who not in a good mood these days because of the injuries he's had this season and his inability to find the back of the net gets into it with Corey Conacher and Conacher has not been happy either because he was victimized on that second goal that Vancouver scored today when Conacher thought it should have been a penalty on him for high sticking and it took him out of the play and Vancouver scored. Face off in the Ottawa zone just joining us Vancouver took a 2-0 lead in the early stages of the first period Ottawa battled back to tie before the period was out and Cody Ceci the only goal so far in the second period to give Ottawa a 3-2 lead now ever a long shot that drifts down in front knocked out by Zibanejad and as Tandem goes back 
Icing waved off. The puck died there. Right at the goal line. Yeah, the slowness of the ice really made a difference. That normally would have been an icing call. And Kessler bowls his way across the line for Vancouver. Taken down by Zibanejad at the horn. And the Ottawa Senators take the lead in the second and go to the dressing room with a 3-2 lead after 40 minutes of play. Stay tuned for the Discover Card Intermission Report with Catherine Tappan, Keith Jones, and Anson Carter. Senator Strong second line. And the Sharks in a big battle against the Devils. All that is yet to come. The 2014 Heritage Classic in Vancouver. Back and forth they go. Big hits and a critical injury to Vancouver star Daniel Sedin. Our second mission coming up on NBC as it began as a snowy day in Vancouver has turned into a rainy one, so the roof is closed at the stadium at BC Place for the final game of the NHL's stadium series this year. Ottawa with the lead by one. But the greater concern for the Vancouver Canucks has to be the health of Daniel Sedin. He's number three all-time on the franchise's goal-scoring list. And despite being in a horrific drought at this point in the season, Brian, he is critical, critical to any playoff hopes the Canucks have. Oh, there's no doubt about that. He is a machine on the power play, and you know they just had to turn around at some point. Here's a look at this, the injury that he sustained. Watch his legs kind of get split apart as he goes into the boards, and then he grabs for that left hamstring right away. His hand will go underneath. He was in, he was in a tremendous amount of pain. He was a very long time getting up off the ice, and they helped him. So how does that change things for the front end, for the management rather, and Ryan Kessler? All the talk about Ryan Kessler uh, the last couple of days, especially since Sochi. Did he ask for a trade? Whatever. Have they been shopping around? He's one of the top two-way centers in the game. Mike Gillis, the general manager, what does he do now? He has to assess the Sedin situation, Gord, and you have to see how serious it is, but it does throw a wrench possibly into plans that might be going on there. Vancouver enters play today, tied for the final playoff spot in the Western Conference with the Dallas Stars and the Winnipeg Jets. We'll have Dallas and Buffalo tomorrow night on NBCSN. There are a lot of big names being thrown around uh, for th before this trade deadline hits. We saw the Miller trade get get, yeah. uh, get made the other day from uh, Miller, Ryan Miller going from Buffalo to St. Louis. There are a lot of other big names. I, I, I think we're going to see a lot of action, some pretty heavy action between now and the deadline. But for teams like Vancouver and Ottawa, who are right in the bubble, are you a buyer or are you a seller? They don't know. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. They're both interested in getting in the playoffs first. And, and uh, Brian Murray, Ottawa GM, had said, look, I want somebody who's got some, who's been around the NHL, who's got some experience, he likes some scoring, but also has some term on his contract. He doesn't want any rental. Look out in behind the Vancouver goal. Falling on the play was Chris Tanev, and Eddie Lack hangs out of that lookout. Yeah, the Chris Tanev fell down, now and he ends into in Spezza. And yep. the linesman, Brad Lazaro, is trying to keep them apart. Yeah, that's a mismatch there for Ottawa. They don't want Spezza tangling, tangling with Cassian. But when Tanev wiped out, he inadvertently threw the puck right into the feet of Eddie Lack. It was a dangerous situation for a second. Look, at he swept the puck. I think he wanted to sweep it out of the way of the Ottawa player coming from behind him and then realized, oops, I'm putting it out in front of my net. So he kind of held up and it went right into the feet of Eddie Lack and you can see what ensued from that. But they allowed a little talking and pushing and shoving and there's nobody in the penalty box for either team. When you hear about a player being on the rental market, that means he's going to be a free agent this summer, so a team is getting him potentially short term. A guy like Kessler has time to go on his contract, makes him pretty attractive. The top yeah. rental, Thomas Vanek of the New York Islanders, Matt Molson of the Buffalo Sabres. Those guys were traded for each other at the start of the season. Yeah, there's some teams that need, need some scoring on the wings for sure, too. Two very interesting names there. Now Mike Hoffman works it back in front. And Kessler has it now for Vancouver. If you're just joining us, Daniel City hurt for the second period. Will not return. Chance down for Burrow. Throws it back in front as Zibanejad gets it to the line and out for Ottawa. Much better tempo early on here in Vancouver coming out on the attack. They haven't had much the second half of the game. Now Burrows walks in and fires short side. Anderson makes the stop and pounces on the rebound. John Tortorella talked this morning about his offense. He said, we've seen it the last couple of games in the spurts. Guys are starting to get a little bit more confident. It is fragile, and they've come out here pushing well. They like their defense up on the play. When they play with confidence, they use their defensemen a lot. But they came out with just good momentum and good speed through the neutral zone in that last rush. 
Oh, the extra collides with Neal, and the play came back in. They're going to call a hand pass at the Ottawa line. Kevin BX doesn't like that call. Canucks go to the sunny south for a couple of days in Phoenix Tuesday, Dallas Thursday. Two critical games for them in the chase for playoff spots. There's been a little bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle. Well, Chris Neal now after Cassian on the far side of the board. Sestino and Sestino. Oh, Sestino, excuse me. Sestino leads the NHL in fighting penalties with 15. The Canucks are number two in fights to the Philadelphia Flyers. They look rather similar. Boy, they eyeballing each this other right now. But here, I think Stito definitely wants to go. And so far, Neil is saying no thanks. Neil going to do a nasty battle verbally with Johan Franzen after the game on Thursday. That's fired back in front. Anderson makes the stop. Rebound fired wide of the goal. Not a good chance for Sestito. Sestito tried to take a big run at Greiber coming out from behind the net right after that faceoff. He's looking for somebody somewhere. And now Zach Smith the other way for Ottawa. Throws on the head, but the pass for Tottenham Greening is offside. And more pushing and shoving breaks out in front of the Vancouver bench. As Neil. Yeah, Neil with Sestito. Yeah, Neil's got to come back in. He's, he's their toughest guy out there. He's got to get in the face of Sestino. Now watch Sestino right off the faceoff. He's got a bead and driver behind the net. <laughs> Real good sidestep at the last second there by Eric Griba. Otherwise, he'd have been paced right up against the glass. And then, as everything ended at the end of the shift, Sestito in the face of a couple of guys. And Sestito hasn't stopped now. He's he's yapping at the bench. Anybody who wants a piece of him right now, he's well. And that's it. He's, referee's had enough. Sestito just got a penalty. Tom Tom Cowell. Wow. The referee just went, okay. And Neal's going to get one, too. Boy, you know what? I, I think Sestito was fortunate there. He was certainly the more aggressive one verbally. Neil was doing a lot of nodding, but Sestito really aggressive. And Tom Cowell, the referee, just had enough of both of them. Just wants to settle this thing down. I was going to say just before all this broke out that we've had a little pushing and shoving board, but there hasn't been a tremendous amount of animosity. But this third period, these guys have a different idea. And Sestito mocking Neil for not taking his gloves off. That was the crux of the conversation post game between Johan Franzen and Chris Neal. Franzen accused Neal of trying to fight late in the game, and Neal came back and said, Anytime Franzen wants to take me on, I'm around. Well, he's trying to shame him into it, but for, for Chris Neal, it's not the right time. His team is up 3 2. He doesn't want to have a potential momentum changer, and that's exactly what Sestito was trying to do. Trying to get into a fight, turn things around, maybe inspire his team. First time in a while, Brian, we've seen two penalties called against players who were on the players' bench at the time of the penalty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now Carlson going back. Up by Hendricks and Ian McClough back for it. As Chris Higgins steps into him. Up back up by Higgins, 10 F. Drops it down to Higgins with a shot that was kicked away by Carlson. Got a leg on that. Mark McCarthy drops that back to Eric Carlson. McCarthy signed as a free agent away from Toronto in the offseason. A two-year deal with Ottawa. He was fun in a big way. Oh, what a move by Kessler at the line. Ryan Kessler in shoots. And Anderson gets an arm on that. Now Edwards drops it back. Kessler fires again off the leg and wide. And Yannick Hansen falls and gives Eric Carlson a chance to throw it ahead of the Ottawa line. What a save that was by Anderson. The moves by Kessler from the blue line in. Outstanding. Alex Hedler kicked that high in the air to knock it out of the zone. And Zabanajad comes back in. Four on four. Here in the third period. Cody Cece, who has the go-ahead goal for Ottawa, plays that down in the corner. Ryan. Back to Cece. In for Bobby Ryan. And Bobby Ryan now winds his way in. Spins and shoots. That was tipped just wide by Zabanajad. Now to an open wing. Canucks are hemmed in here. As Ryan was on the floor check, now he gets called back to the bench. Boy, that little spin around shot by Ryan was really dangerous. And now Ryan, as he goes to the bench, he's yelling at uh, Hansen. Doesn't look like they're getting any penalties, at least from here. <laughs> so far, not they get to the bench. It's okay on the ice when you say stuff to the bench. And now Neil plays it. Both these teams came out for the third in a real bad mood compared to the first two. The lot in the line as Richardson comes in. Brad Richardson. 
Hook check there by Weirkosh. And the Sens break it back as Spezza looks ahead for McCulloch. That pass broken up by Hamuse. Through the middle of the ice, Cassie on the penalty box. Has it taken away by Condra. He plays it ahead for Spezza. In comes the Senators captain, Jason Spezza. Buys some time, feeds in front to Condra. He poked that wide. Now Colin Greeny with a sharp angle. Kicked away by Lack. And Smith tees it up and fires, and Lack makes the save as Condra was digging for the rebound. Early on in this third period, look at Ryan Kessler. Look at that beautiful move coming in from the blue line, then back to his forehand. Gets a terrific shot away. Anderson was sliding so quickly from his left to his right. I thought it had gone in at first. I'd lost sight of the puck. But Anderson was able to get that right arm on it, and a big save, a timely one. And then Bobby Ryan on this turnaround, look at how he creates that situation. That was terrific and was really dangerous for the goaltender Lack to handle. Went off a foot right in front of that. At the end of that shift is when Bobby Ryan came back to the bench in ill humor and had several words for Hanson along the way. Higgins throws that down to the corner. Eric Carlson back with it. And Greeny couldn't knock it out as Henrik Sedin plays it back. Walking this Ryan Stanton with a long wrist shot. And that's gloved by Craig Anderson. Stanton, one of the many Vancouver defense with the shots on goal in this game. Vancouver's used their defense really well. They've got seven of them. Diaz only comes in on the power play for the most part. He's, he hasn't had too many shifts on forward for that matter, but whoever's been back there on the point could be Bieksa, Edler, Stanton, whomever. Garrison's got a goal in this game already, and Vancouver uses the points and shoots the puck well. They need those screens and deflections in front. Seems like Kessler now every other shift for Vancouver. And we'll draw one back. Garrison has that pinball wide. Hanson plays it back. Garrison tees it up and fires. That was blocked in front. Kessler hit Kessler. Hit Kessler. Yeah, Just what he needs. After he got stung by that shot from William Kovalchuk at the Olympics. But hurt his hand. He kept around in the first game back from Sochi with the Canucks. Now Hanson brings it ahead. Bounces that down to the corner. CeCe turns it over to Alex Burrow. Sends it back in front with Lack and Hanson taken down. And the puck still loose. Hanson battling for it. Anderson's got it. And now we got gloves. Phillips and Burrow. Faces as a late Lack was taken to Craig Anderson. And the big rig, Chris Phillips, didn't like that very much. Good defense by Phillips. Timing was good. Burrows was really good down low. He had a little timing pattern with the... Uh, Hansen. Hansen came out from the edge of the net right in front and Burroughs on the opposite side threw it out in front. So it was kind of a crossing pattern in front in front of Anderson. And then the collision happened. Here comes Burroughs. There's that little chip out in front. See how Hansen came from the other side of the net? That was a dangerous play. Then Anderson covers up and a little extra point of poking them out there. Phillips getting in and then prior to that look at this chance by Garrison. Garrison I don't think realized how much time and room that he had. I was looking right over his shoulder. I thought he could have taken another step and really fired a bomb. Look at Kessler. The screen was there but that leg that he lifted the left one that's the one that got hit so he inadvertently blocked the shot. So Burroughs and Phillips get offsetting minor penalties with 14-22 to go in the third period and Ottawa leading by one. Chris Phillips in his 16th year with the Ottawa Senators has missed 10 games in the last six years. Wow. And he's he, not afraid to play a physical style just like he did on that last shift. Good on Vancouver coming out physical, I think, though, Gordon. Now Henderson Eden wins the draw back to 10. Now Edler with a shot that was blocked by McCulloch, and that stung him. Henderson Eden. Chris crossing with Edler. Walks across the top, the puck rolls across the blue line. Boy, with Eric Carlson yeah. over yeah. Henrik Sedin. I know, really slick uh, stick work by Carlson. He's seen enough of uh, Henrik Sedin over the years. He didn't get to play with him in Sweden this year, but boy, he did a really nice job of forcing him out of the zone. And the wraps it around. Henrik Sedin waiting for it. McCaw steps into him. So McCaw hit the hurt his twin brother, Henrik, or Daniel, rather, earlier in the game. Spencer knocks it down. Carlson was stripping the puck. And Higgins plays an onside for Henrik Sedin. 
His pass goes off Hoffman. Now Mike Hoffman swings back. In comes Hoffman out the right side as both teams are changing. Post up and shoots. He whistled up wide. Held up the line by Weirkosh. And Zibanejad with a shot that banks high off the glass. Yannick Hansen back with it. 45 seconds to go in the four on four. Paul McLean, Ottawa's coach, yelling at his troops. Forwards, puck support. Be hard on the puck. And Hoffman brings it in, plays it deep, and goes off on a change. As Ham Hughes swings back for Vancouver. Dan Ham Hughes, long lead pass for Kessel, who plays onside. Kessel walks out of the corner with an empty move. And then the second try, Clark MacArthur got in the way and brings it back for Ottawa. MacArthur. That is that pass in front. Eric Driver with a shot. Black the save. And Ham Hughes cleans out the rebound. Here's Hansen back with it. Looking for Kessler. The pass bounces back to Ham Hughes. Twelve and a half to go in the third period. Vancouver scored twice in the first take the lead. Ottawa scored twice late in the first to tie it up. They got the go-ahead goal in the second. Good chance on the rush there. Nice dangerous shot there by Brad Richardson. The set up by Ham Hughes coming through the neutral zone. Ranging back is David Booth. Drops it off for Tan M. A long lead pass. That missed Brad Richardson. And Vancouver out shooting Ottawa 7 to 1 here in the third period. Let's go back to that defensive play by Eric Carlson against Henrik Sedin. Henrik Sedin coming out at the top at the blue line there was trying to fake him like he was going to drop the pass and go the opposite direction. Carlson stayed with him right through the neutral zone. And then on the rush this last shift, this is Richardson coming down the wing and getting a real good shot on Anderson. Games are back to five on five. And Carlson bumped there by Tandem on the four check. The puck back down to the Vancouver zone. Tanev through the middle to Cassius. And now Zach Cassian pounds it back down to the Ottawa zone. Anderson has to wait for it. The puck bounce off his stick. He had to be careful not to play that illegally. Time, time. It's back down to Vancouver line as BX ahead. When Carlson touched the puck last, he was in the far corner. He shot the puck around the boards, and Cassian finished his check. Carlson didn't like that very much. Figured that Cassian, Cassian was coming out, taking a look, looking for him. Let's take a look and see if we can pick it up. But look at Cassie, and he's got Carlson all lined up, even though the puck is already gone. Gets up, pushes him in. He held up a little bit there. But Carlson, as the play was coming up the other end of the ice, got the ref. Look at it, turns right around to the referee. He thought the hit was a little bit late. Now Turris wins the faceoff back for CeCe. Condra digging for it, and it's picked up by Ryan Stanton. For Vancouver, through the middle to Henrik Sedin. And Sedin comes jumping ahead, but Phillips throws him off the puck. Higgins for it. To Sedin. Back he goes to BX at the line. The long rear shot floats down in front. And Higgins trying to knock it down, but the puck squeezed out of the zone, and Turris has it for Ottawa. Along with Condra. Condra trying to swing that rink wide. And now played ahead by Stanton. That breakaway pass just missed Henrik Sedin. Condra busts in. In comes Condra, taps it down to Turris. Loose in front. And that play broken up by a sprawling Dan Ham Hughes for Vancouver. Play opening up here in the third period as Turris brings it ahead. He's being harassed here by Hanson. And Burroughs has it for Vancouver. Alex Burroughs. Throws that down to the Ottawa zone. Anderson out to play it. And his clearing attempt. Not Ryan Kessel down. And in comes Bobby Ryan for Ottawa. Ryan pulls his way behind the goal, steps away from Garrison. Good recovery there by Garrison. Nice stick handling by Ryan, but when he went to drop the shoulder and drive to the neck, Garrison, uh-uh. And away come the Canucks. Under 10 to go in the third period. Hanson in, shoots at the foot wide. And Ryan waiting for it for Ottawa. As it knocked back in by Delphi. Fourth line on the ice for Vancouver. Hanson sends it back in front. And a great chance turned away by Anderson. Off the stick of Tom Sestino. And Edler fires it right back down to the Ottawa zone as he can actually keep the pressure applied here. 
Neal intercepts that pass and throws it up to center ice. David Booth got tangled up there by Greeny. Heather tries to bank it ahead. Now Booth. Back the other way. He's got Neal all over him. And Chris Neal gives him a shot at the end of the play. As we're contesting. And across the line, he comes. A long shot. Knocked down by Black. And he will hang on to that as another gathering forms to the goaltender's right. 3-2, Ottawa leads here in the third period of the 2014 Heritage Classic. In the corner, Bobby Ryan watching the replay of me watching it. I'm looking at the monitor there, trying to see what went right, what went wrong, see if he can pick something up. These guys are sharp. They use the monitors that we have down here. <laughs> then you caught them. Whenever they can. Now you caught them. Yeah. He's a right-hand shot on that left-wing side. Garrison was smart. He didn't want to let him load up and shoot the puck and use Garrison as a screen there. It was well played defensively by Garrison. Now Spezza steps up for Ottawa. The puck knocked away from him. And Burroughs to the line and squeezed ahead by Ken. Now Zettler swings back for Vancouver. Again, snow and rain outside, so the roof remains closed at the Stadium of BC Place. First stadium game played with a retractable roof. Although Pittsburgh fans will tell you that their old arena, the Civic Arena, did have a retractable roof. It was never used for a hockey game. And it's uh, it, it's gotten damp in here, and that's why the ice is, is got progressively slower as the game goes on. Humidity is the worst enemy of good ice for skating on and handling the puck. It's warm, and the humidity is starting to catch up. Now the thought in the corner. It's up there by Ryan Kessler digging for the loose puck. And Spezza lifts that back down to the Vancouver zone. Under eight to go in the third period. Canucks haven't scored a goal since the early part of the first period. The last goal scored by Cassie, 11 27. Now they walk in and Anderson makes the stop. Rebound loose in front. And a terrific chance for Cassie in there. Now Stanton with the drive. And Anderson hangs on to that. Being aggressive offensively is what John Tortorella talked about. Look who's there. Bieksa, the defenseman, up on the play, trying to tie this game up. 3-2 Ottawa leads here in Vancouver. He uses Boston Bruins. Patrice Bergeron takes his Olympic gold medal the Big Apple to take on the New York Rangers. And birthday boy, Henry Glenswood. Bruins Rangers up next on NBCSN. I mentioned Kevin Bieksa up on the play, the defenseman, watch him in front of the net. He hits it once in the air, tries to hit it the second time, but misses. Henrik Sedin. Up there along with Zach Cassie, who belted Eric Conner. Now Ottawa busting in a chance for MacArthur taken down. He goes sliding at Eddie Lack, and Lack was carpeting ahead. Play continues as Henrik Sedin drops it back for Higgins. Higgins in and shoots, that's blocked by Mathai. The puck at the net is way off its moorings at so the other end of the ice. Once Ottawa gains possession, the play will be called. Eddie Lacks trying to get it back in position so that his team can continue on the offense. And now McCart MacArthur yeah. touches the puck, play is called. They'll make sure that they get the Vancouver net properly affixed. But what a nasty collision down in the Canucks' end. Well, it was a really good drive here by MacArthur, who had speed. Watch Stanton recover, though. His, the timing of his dive was really good. He reached around with the stick, so he did make contact with the puck and cleared it really well before he takes the feet out from underneath MacArthur. Look at the dive there. You can see the swoop of the stick and then the collision with the goaltender. MacArthur ends up in the net. They're going to fix it now. Eddie Lack saw that his team had the puck under control in his own zone, so he figured, I better try to fix this thing and get it back on its mooring, see if we can't tie this game up. Well, the theory behind that ruling is that Ottawa dislodged the net, so should not gain the advantage when Vancouver has the puck. Yeah. Nasty collision. A bounce around the face off. Hansen couldn't corral it. Now Jason Garrison back forth. The native of White Rock, BC, a suburb of Vancouver, but an hour south of him. Cody Cece, whose goal at the moment stands as a difference maker. Chris Neal throws that rink wide. And comes Greening with a shot and a glove save made by Lack. Boy, Chris Neal made a terrific play coming through the neutral zone. That, what a heads up pass. Got it right on the tape of Greening, who was wide open on the left wing. Little chip play, and here comes Neal. Look at him, see, he looked across the ice, knew exactly what he wanted to do. 
and Greening with lots of time and room on the far side decided what kind of shot he wanted to make. Chris Neal's had an impact in this game. He usually does. He stood up for his teammates, especially against Cassian, uh, Cassian and Sestito when he's had to. And good offensive play there. 6.32 to go in the third period. Off the faceoff, Corey Conacher. Sends that back in front for Spets with the pass bounced away from him. And now the call trying to win the battle. At the point, Grima steps up. His shot was blocked. And Kessler plays that for Burroughs. Intercepted by Conacher. Flips it ahead for McCulloch, trying to find Corey Conacher. And now Tenev picks it up for the Canucks. Thrown line for Kessler, who's bumped there. And a penalty coming up. As Kessel is taken down by Griba, a high-sticking call coming to the Ottawa Senators with 5.49 to go in the third period. The Vancouver Canucks down a goal. We'll go to the power play when we come back. Kill coming up here for Ottawa with just under six minutes to go. The high sticking call will happen right at the blue line. Here comes Kessler. There comes Griba in from right field, and he gets his stick up. He was trying to hook his stick. Looks like he missed it. Came right up in the face of Ryan Kessler. The Ottawa bench, especially Paul McLean, was going nuts. He thought it was a little bit of a, a fake job there by Kessler, but you can see he plainly hit him in the mouth. He was also saying, well, Kessler was bent over. He bent into it. Kessler heard him say that, and the exchange was not pleasant after that. So the animosity continues in this third period at a much higher level, Lord. Kessler leads the Canucks with seven power play goals, with a faceoff is won by Zach Smith. The puck here's the line, but not out. Now Carlson on the second try, fires it down to the Vancouver zone. Canucks are one for two on the power play. Jason Garrison scored the man advantage to open the scoring in the first period. Hughes, game center ice, and pounds that down to the Ottawa zone. Kessler, trying to leave it there for Garrison, but the puck trickles across the line, and Vancouver regroups. And 54,000 plus now, urging the Canucks on. 54-194, the official attendance for this game at the stadium at BC Plains. Dan Hamhuis, back for Garrison. And Garrison can really rip it, as we saw in the first period. Henrik Sedin. Lost the puck to Colin Greening and the thought fires it down to the Vancouver zone. Ottawa doing a really good job of confounding Vancouver. Vancouver tried to get in, get turned around, get set up. That's one of the biggest issues in power plays in the NHL these days, and they couldn't do it there. One minute to go on the span no, advantage, no, and of course, no. the Canucks are without Daniel Sedin, who was shaken up earlier in the game, and now fired right back down by the Senators, this time Chris Phillips. 40 seconds to go in the Vancouver power play. BXO. Game center ice and fires it down. Higgins looking for the retrieval for Vancouver. But picked up by the Senators and fired down by Phillips. He took a whack and had a look back at the official. And we're going to get a penalty, I think, because of it. It's going to be a tripping call. It is. Vancouver is going to end up with a penalty. I'm not quite sure who got it there. If it was Hansen. No, it's not Hansen. It's Richardson, 15. Trying to just play hard on the puck there. Richardson gets in on the feet of Phillips. Pulls him out from underneath. So that nullifies the rest of the power play. And it'll send Ottawa onto it. In 24 seconds. So four on four. With 4.13 to go. In the third period. We'll see how aggressive Vancouver is four on four. You know Ottawa, especially with Eric Carlson out there, will be aggressive. Even though they're the ones that are up on the scoreboard here, that extra ice. 65 really likes it. Ryan up face off, went wrapped it around from the top, looking down for Zibanejad. Played ahead to Hanson, and the Canucks break in with numbers. Then comes Janik Hanson, his pass to flex away from Dalkin, and Hanny stepped into Carlson. And Hanson bumps Zibanejad hard. Vancouver battling for the puck, trying to gain possession, but it's Carlson for the center. 3.45 to go in the third. Zibanejad comes in. Tripped away and played ahead by Edler. Zibanejad tripped him in behind the play. 
Carlson was lucky that pass wasn't knocked down by Higgins. Higgins was in behind Carlson. He was trying to poach for the puck. Higgins would have had a partial breakaway because Ottawa was on the line change. So now the Senators on the power play and Turris brings it ahead. Kyle Turris. Throws that back in front, taken away by Hendrick Sedin on his back, and he buys himself some time. Was looking for the breakaway pass for Yannick Hansen, who stuck in shorthanded behind the Ottawa defense. Now a bouncing puck for Carlson, and Hansen jumps on that. Hoffman for Turris. Three to go in the third period. Lead pass for Spezza. In comes Jason Spezza, nifty move, works it back in front, he fans on the shot. And now Turris gathers it up. 35 seconds ago, there's Ottawa power play, and skying for it was Hoffman, but he can't hold the line. Carlson makes a hot pass. Kessler steals it away. Ryan Kessler working it in shorthanded. Feeds in front. And Eric Carlson took that pass away from Higgins. Carlson is so calm. Even when he gets stripped of the puck, he doesn't panic and chase it down. He gets back into the dangerous area, intercept with the pass, and it's like nothing ever happened. Benajan leaves it there for CeCe. The final seconds of the Richardson penalty. As he steps up, the teams are back to five on five. 2-10 to go in the third period. Savannah to Bobby Ryan. Throws it back in front and Lack makes a quick save on Milan McCulloch and hangs on. There'll be a face-off in the Vancouver zone with 2-0-1 to go in the third. Eric Carlson's got great talent, so he'll take chances. You can see he's victimized there by a bouncing puck. But watch him. He just gets back into the scoring area. He's not panicked. He knows they're under control. He knows where everybody is on the ice. Just calmly takes the puck back and turns it back up ice. Great sense and awareness of the game, both with the puck on his stick and where everybody on both teams is as soon as he gets the puck. Feeds off one by Kessler. Edward jumps on the loose puck. And the Canucks bring it ahead. Fired in by Ender, Phil Tussers back for Ottawa. And now Higgins back in court, gains possession in the corner. Throws it back in front, knocked down by Cece, the puck's still loose. And Zach Smith on it now for Ottawa. The Vancouver net is empty. In comes Chris Neal, throws it back in front. Colin Greedy scores! Colin Greedy snaps it home. And the Ottawa Senators are going to spoil the Vancouver party. Ottawa did a really good job, just under pressure there. Vancouver pulled the goaltender, extra attacker. The penalties, everything was, was even up. So Vancouver pulls the goalie, gets the extra man out, and just the execution along the wall, used the boards. You could see a nearly impossible situation. You got a two-on-one with Neal, who's played a strong game, gets it to Greening early, so early, so Greening can get a good angle. Not much Kevin Biaxa can do there except try to take something away low in case Greening is sloppy. He's not, and that's the decisive goal. So the Vancouver Canucks, who came in struggling with one win in the last nine games, are on their way to losing one of the signature games of their season. And the Ottawa Senators coming off one of their worst performances of the year, hammered on home ice by Detroit. Get a much needed win that for now will draw them within three points to the final playoff spot in the East. That's unless Vancouver's got a quick two goal miracle. In it. Here's Garrison with it. Brought up by Hanson Long, jump drips high and wide. And the final minute now in the third period. That Cassie comes barreling in to pick up the loose puck. Turris, and he's at the point. Vancouver is once again empty as that shot is tipped wide by Cassie. And the crowd there chops it up. Chance now. Eric Ponder that was knocked down by Booth. And now Garrison feeds across to Hamuse. Extra skater on the ice for the Canucks. And Hamuse sends it around. Five, banks it off the side boards. Back at the point is BX, a hit shot block. Hanson feeds back. There's Cassie the drive. Hooked away by Anderson. Kessler shoots. That goes off the leg and line. Ten seconds to go now. Carlson got slammed there by Kessler. 
Played back down to the Vancouver zone. And the Ottawa Senators are going to leave the 2014 Heritage Classic with a 4-2 win over the Vancouver Canucks. Anderson with a couple of real key saves that held them in there. Ottawa come from behind. Good game for them. It was nearly a century ago, 1915, that the Ottawa Senators played the Vancouver Millionaires at the old Denman Arena in Vancouver. They could scarcely imagine what would happen now. The Denman Arena burned down in the 1930s. And now, in this 21st century venue, wearing uniforms reminiscent of a century ago, it's the Ottawa Senators with a huge 4-2 win over Vancouver. And for the Canucks, the concern will be the health of Daniel Sedin. Injured in the early stages of the game. And with the trade deadline looming on Wednesday, the question will be, which direction are they going? And which direction is Ryan Kessler going? As potentially one of the most coveted players on the trade market. A lot of stuff in the air between now and that trade deadline deal, for sure, for both teams. Players from both time teams salute the crowd here. 54,000-plus turned up for the final game of the 2014 Stadium Series, which began with the Winter Classic in Ann Arbor, Michigan, that snowy evening between Toronto and Detroit. There were two games at Yankee Stadium. There was the game at Dodger Stadium. Soldier Field last night. That was, a that was a beauty to watch last night, Gord. It was tough for the players with all that snow being pushed around, and they played hard despite the, the weather and the fun for the fans. Good old-fashioned hockey that was. And here, with a retractable roof to keep the snow and the rain out, it's Ottawa celebrating under the roof at BC Place. Thank you.